Good morning, everyone. Um, so today I'm going to describe a very innovative, um, ultra low power, high density, parallel micro LED uh, optical interconnect technology. Um, it's uh, quite advantageous over, compared to more conventional solutions. Uh, so I hope you'll find it to be interesting. Um, I won't dwell on the obvious, which is that I see IO bandwidth is a critical problem today. Um, processor speed has outpaced I.O. speed for many decades, uh, high-performance computing systems, uh, AI, ML. Processors are really bottlenecked by this. Um, one of the more important uh, bottlenecks today is the processor memory interconnect. HBM, uh, high bandwidth memory, uh, is increasing rapidly in, um, in both throughput and density one terabit per second per millimeter of shoreline of the chip, going up to two terabits per second for HBM4. So anyway, we certainly need a new generation of interconnects that give us lower power, as, mentioned, as measured in picojoules per bit, higher density in terms of both shoreline and aerial density of interconnects, and they can go more than a few centimeters. It doesn't need to go across a data center, but it is very advantageous to go at least several meters. Um, I also won't dwell on this. The punchline of this uh, slide is that as the electrical interconnects get longer, uh, they get less dense and, uh, and, have, and dissipate more power. That's based on fundamental capacitance and resistance issues. When we get to optical interconnects at longer interconnects, that they, uh, they have less dependence of loss on length, but have much lower density and much higher power dissipation. And those are uh, some of the issues that we're addressing. Our technology, which you can kind of see in the uh, upper middle here, is significantly higher in both density and, and um, lower power dissipation than any other solution in that kind of one centimeter to 10 meter range. So this is the, what we call the light bundle architecture. Um, the key innovation is using 2D arrays of ultra-fast gallium nitride LEDs. This is a very strange approach to optical communications, um, uh, but it turns out it's very advantageous. Uh, so these are operating at about 430 nanometers. They're, they're very blue. Um, and these essentially are a highly parallel array of optical interconnects. We use silicon photodetectors on the far side, um, and then we use these multi-mode um, or these bundles of multimode fiber. So here in this figure, you can see this uh, um, transceiver chiplet. The transceiver chiplet has an array of these blue LEDs that are shining upward off the surface of the chip, and I'll talk more about how, that's, how those LEDs are put on the chip. And then the photodetectors are on another part of the chip. Those can either be monolithically integrated with the silicon electronics or can be a separate bonded piece of silicon. Silicon is a great photo detector uh, in, the, in the blue. Um, the typical per lane speeds are on the order of four gigabits per second, eight gigabits per second, so quite modest speeds per lane, but then we can do hundreds of, of lanes very easily. So, for instance, in the chip that we currently are um, uh, bringing up in the lab, that the throughput is about 300 channels at four gigabits per second for a 1.2 terabit per second throughput. Um, this technology is capable of sub-picojoule per bit um, power dissipation, uh, quite high aerial densities, um, I say greater than two terabits per second per square millimeter with, we expect fairly quickly to get to um, 10 terabits per second per square millimeter. The one caveat relative to more conventional optical technologies is we're limited to about 10 meters of length. That's limited by dispersion in the multimode fiber. Um, so let me, in uh, one of the big advantages of the technology as well is it's not tightly tied to a given IC process node. So it'll work on various Samsung, TSMC process nodes. They don't necessarily have to be the, the bleeding edge because the per lane speeds are quite modest. As I said, four or eight gigabits per second is typical. Um, so this is the transceiver IC that we, that we have right now um, that we're demonstrating um, internally. This is based on the 16 nanometer TSMC FinFET node. Um, it has an array of 304 LEDs, on, uh, and they're spaced on a 50 micron grid. Um, so the, the diameter of this 
array is about one millimeter total. Um, and then there's a matching array of photodetectors. Um, we form little micro lenses on top of each LED and photodetector to maximize coupling to the multimode fibers. Um, and the multimode fiber cores are about 45, nanometer, or 45 microns in diameter. Um, the target link power budget for this is sub picojoule per bit. That includes all of the transceiver and receiver electronics in addition to the optoelectronics. Uh, we also integrate some digital functionality. There's a pulse pattern generator and error checker. There's an open eye monitor for monitoring the, the received uh, waveforms. And then this also has a, an OHBI die-to-die uh, -die interface that allows you to interface it to um, other ICs at high speed. Um, the, the most innovative aspect of our technology is the use of these micro, uh, micro LEDs. Um, this is a, a photo showing an array of our uh, LEDs. They have kind of this waffle pattern on them. Um, gallium nitride is a very interesting material system. Um, it's often grown on a patterned sapphire substrate that has kind of this, this waffle pattern that has on the order of kind of one micron uh, uh, features. And that helps to improve the efficiency, uh, the quantum efficiency of the material, as well as improving the ability to extract light out of the gallium nitride into, uh, into air or into a lens material. Um, and we're able to transfer these LEDs. They're grown on sapphire, then they're transferred onto a CMOS chip. That's done using a technology that has been developed for micro LED displays. So uh, the, there's a, an Exmer laser that's used to basically blast the LEDs off of the sapphire substrate, and then they're bonded onto a, uh, the CMOS substrate. Um, because displays need, typically need hundreds of thousands or, or uh, millions of pixels, um, this can be done with very high um, yield. We only have a few hundred or a few thousand pixels, so it's easy for us to yield this, uh, to, to achieve high yields. Um, and so for the Kyoto um, uh, IC, we're using eight micron diameter LEDs, operating each at about four gigabits per second and driving each LED at about 500 microamps, so that gives you about a half picojoule per bit. Uh, power dissipation. We have demonstrated these LEDs up to 14 gigabits per second um, in other, on other platforms. It also, they also have very good high temperature performance. They don't fall off in performance in the same way as indium phosphide or gallium, um, gallium arsenide emitters. And so um, they, they perform very well and they're very reliable even when sitting next to hot chips. The receiver array um, is uses bonded uh, silicon photodetectors. These have very low capacitance, um, and it's an interesting interdigitated structure that's enabled by the very short absorption length of, uh, of silicon at the 430 nanometers. And these are then bonded onto uh, the CMOS IC that has the receiver electronics in it. You can see that we get nice waterfall curves without, a, without an error floor. These, uh, this is an incoherent link and so it doesn't um, suffer from a bunch of coherent impairments. Uh, there's some advantages to these LED sources. Um, and the receiver is very low power, so the total tower power dissipation is about uh, 0.35 picojoules per bit that we're measuring. Um, one of the interesting aspects of, uh, of this link is the use of these multi-core fiber bundles. So we use fiber that was originally developed for uh, lighting fixtures you've seen, so it's very inexpensive, just, and we can put it into coherent bundles. Each one of these fibers is about 50 microns in diameter, and this array that you're looking at has 331 fibers in it. Um, and then we're able to basically just pack those together um, and, and but couple all of those to the transceiver and to the transmitter and receiver arrays in one uh, packaging operation, kind of plus or minus five micron positioning tolerance, so much easier than typical uh, single mode packaging. So, in summary, um, we have these very innovative micro LED based links. They achieve uh, a new frontiers in power and density. Uh, sub picojoule per bit power dissipation. Density is right now at about two terabits per second per square millimeter, but we expect it to go up significantly from there. Just to make a note also, even though this, these highly parallel optical links seem very weird, it's not a new idea. 
uh, you know, f some people here probably weren't born when uh, people were originally working on highly parallel optical links and optical computing. Um, but um, this, these gallium nitride LEDs are a very practical way to do these highly parallel optical links. Um, the, it, we have the advantage of being able to op, uh, integrate onto any IC process nodes that we're not stuck with a given global foundries process node or whatever in, in, with, um, for instance, silicon photonics. Um, and we also have uh, flexible ways of attaching the fiber with kind of plus or minus five micron um, precision or accuracy. Um, low cost, so these LEDs are extremely low cost. It, effectively, gallium nitride LEDs come from the lighting industry, so very inexpensive um, and can be packaged in a relatively inexpensive way. Um, applications, so our initial application is a, an active optical cable that's used in uh, data centers. But um, beyond that, the big, the big game is solving the bottlenecks in processor memory interconnects and interprocessor communications. Um, so I'll stop here and take any questions you have. All right, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Rob, for this uh, great overview here. Yeah, the floor is open for questions. You're stunned? Oh, okay. That, that would uh, the question was what is the electrical interface to this massively parallel right thing so like so it's a standard pluggable AOC module so it would just be a GAUI interface just like any other pluggable AOC but then you divide high speed that yeah is then we it, we inverse multiplex on the chip into the the four gigabit per second channels okay. another question. Uh, Thank you for the talk. So my sure. question is, uh, do you have any like large scale commercial deployment data to show the uh, like a reliability study in the field? Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the question. So we have been doing reliability uh, testing in the lab, but we're not yet at the at the point of large scale deployment. So we're doing we're in our initial um, product development phase right now. Okay. Thank uh, but, you. but the reliability is looking quite promising for these devices. Gallium nitride is a very robust material system. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, thank you for your talk. I've noticed your fiber bounder currently the fiber count is like 331. Yeah. Is this a, like a, um, a limitation for the fiber bounder or you are looking for like a... No, that's a, that's a good question. So, um, no, it's not a fundamental limitation. We, uh, our initial fiber bundles um, have been hexagonal in shape, and 331 is kind of one of the magic numbers for when you build out a hexagon, and 331 times four gigabits per second got us over uh, one, one terabit per second, uh, but there, there are other bundle shapes that are interesting and possible, so there's nothing magical about that. Okay, good time for one more question. Actually, I have one, Rob. Chris. And uh, you know, so individual lanes are relatively low speed, uh, a few gigabits. So how do you scale to the multi-terabit uh, links that a AIML is looking for ultimately? Right, good question. So um, obviously we can just have, uh, you know, re-instantiate multiple of these kind of terabit or a few terabit per second links, so more parallelism. But beyond that, we can scale the individual lane speeds. Um, we think, so we've already done 14 gigabits per second in the lab, and we're, we're, frankly, we're pretty early in exploring what this material system can do. So by, uh, and we have our ability to grow our own material, so we think we can get to 16 gigabits per second or, or beyond per lane fairly readily, and then we can pack them more tightly um, so right now they're on a 50 micron grid and we could go down to kind of half that grid spacing. Uh, we'd tighten up some of the packaging tolerances, but that would, so that would give us another factor of four in, uh, in density. Great, thank you. Sure. I think with this we'll, uh, we'll wrap. Thanks again, Rob, for a great overview. All right, thank you.